All right, welcome back to the channel. I have got an ultimate XRP update for you. Yes, the reason that you come to this channel because you love XRP Ripple News. I'm gonna go through some really fun stuff that just popped up online. These clips are a few years old, but they speak to the larger volume of where we're heading and why people think XRP can reach a very high price eventually when all of this happens, okay? And so I'm gonna play some clips for you. We're also going to talk about how exchanges are going to use XRP-based transactions. I have a stuff from Ripple Swell and Crypto Erie put this out where Ripple is now aiming their sights on custody, which is really fun and cool. I'll play this clip for you of Navin Gupta and some ISO stuff in here. And we're gonna talk a little bit about, a little bit about the ISDA Ripple partnership. I hope you stick with me through this whole video. Let's go ahead and learn, we'll grow, we'll have some fun together. Let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, so this was actually a talk from like five years ago, but it still is very accurate on where we are heading in this market and what the possibilities are for crypto in the future and why I'm so excited to still hold XRP, no matter what happens in the market, up, down, sideways for years, I'm still gonna hold it because I think it's my best opportunity for life generational wealth. Down the line, I don't know how long this is gonna take. If any YouTuber, influencer, whatever the hell they call themselves, tells you they have a date, they have this, they have that, they're lying to you. Nobody really knows. Not even Ripple really knows how long all of this is going to take. But let's go ahead and play this. Check this out. This. If you're interested in blockchain and you wanna make money, Forget about sending money back to your uncle in France. This is where you should be thinking. This is the size of the entire economy of the world right here. All right, so he's talking about size of, glo uh, size of economy, GDP, bond markets, financial households with wealth, total debt, and then down here is derivatives where he's blocking and the, and the chart's still going. That's the derivatives market, and that's what we're very interested in. That's where all the money is. GDP, this is the notional principle of all derivatives, okay? this. These are all forwards, futures, and options. And this is in trillions, right? It, US dollar in trillions, over 700 trillion. And that's where real value will come from down the line. And these are all derivatives except interest rate swaps. This right here, interest rate swaps. Biggest universe that most of you have never heard of. Millions of lawyers, millions of traders, millions of accounts, all that can be put on the blockchain, okay? And all this clearing system and settlement system, which we took, Dodd-Frank is like this thick, this much of it has to do with clearing and settling of swaps. Okay, it's a, it's a nightmare, it's a mess. And we can take this whole system and simplify it with distributed ledgers. Okay, I want to talk and, and, this. And that's where we're heading. This is actually a chat from five years ago. I asked ISO to send me this full chat. I've actually been watching in the background. It's a lot of fun. I'm learning uh, a lot, even though it is five years old. But I just want to tell you that this clip is five years old. I've seen a lot of people sharing it and posting it like it's brand new. Uh, it's not brand new, guys, but this has always been the vision. All right, let's keep it going. This is actually from the same chat. See these guys. So, net takeaway started off with this circle of innovation and we walked through what's now traditional fintech which you know is only 10 years old okay we walked through starting with capital one all the way forward digitization of checks briefly touched on blockchain people think blockchain is about payments okay and they think it's about potentially market provisioning it's actually also about deposits and lending in fact it's going to be affecting every single part of this circle distributed ledger technologies okay which are not the same as blockchain which is not the same as crypto which is not the same as bitcoin think distributed ledger Think distributed ledger. All right, let's keep it going. All right, the big money and cross-border payments, that's why Ripple and Seller, right? So this is uh, still the same chat. Let me play this. Okay, so look, Western Union isn't gonna go out of business anytime soon. They're gonna adopt different technologies, okay? But this is where the big money is. It's not in remittances. It's in these business-to-business -business payments across border. And that's why we have these kinds of companies like Ripple and Stellar. This is all about business-to-business back-end big volume transactions, which are currently very expensive. If we look at the payment system, they're not sitting at the like, you're sending money back to your uncle, right? It is at the bank level. So the banks are making transactions with other banks. Now, nothing's changed here. You're still doing something like correspondent banking, except now, because the data needs to move around more quickly than the money moves around, right? We can settle these things more quickly. The difference between a Bitcoin and a Ripple, in a nutshell, again, not too much time to elaborate, is that what Bitcoin uses is an open, permissionless, digital, I mean, distributed ledger system where anybody can jump in and, and do a transaction. And that's the beauty of it. I can go buy Bitcoin, you can go buy Bitcoin. We don't need to ask anybody's permission and there's no middleman that can accept or deny, approve or reject. It's distributed, the consensus around validating these transactions. 
What's different about systems like Ripple and most of the blockchain systems that will prevail is that they are permissioned, meaning that you have to be a member and membership has its privileges. And so you have these different nodes and the nodes and basically know one another, okay? And then if I want to give money to my uncle back in, in France, let's say, then I have to go to one of these banks that are a member of the Ripple network, and then my uncle will go to one of these banks that's a member of the Ripple network, and then those banks will do their transacting through this distributed ledger. Awesome, and you know what guys, as you're waiting for your XRPs and your sellers to really find its place and really find its value here in the crypto space, a lot of people are trying to trade different cryptos on speculation and they're having trouble finding it because there's a vast world of knowledge out there. We've had over 12 people join the Cryptoners Discord just in the last two weeks and 11 out of the 12 actually stayed after the seven day free trial. Check down in the description if you want to join this great community and have a community of people working on a common goal to find opportunities in the crypto space. Take a look down in the description for that link if you want to join. How banks can use crypto exchanges for XRP based transactions. This is a lot of cool and this is a lot of fun. Mexico. So we work, so there's a small money service business called Qualix based in Texas and they serve Mexican workers that are sending funds back home to their family in, in Mexico. So what happens is we have relationships that we've helped coordinate with exchanges on both sides of that transaction. So in the US it's Bitstamp, in Mexico it's Bitso, both digital asset exchanges. So they're setting the rates. So in some ways it alleviates the need for Qualix, the financial institution in this case, to even hold XRP. They simply go, the risk is then absorbed by the digital exchange. That's their business, right? They're making markets, they know exchange rates, and there's a fee involved with that. But they will give, or they may have a US dollar account at Bitstamp. Bitstamp, they'll say, hey, Bitstamp, send $1,000 worth of, of pesos to this account in Mexico. Bitstamp converts the spot rate, it moves over the XRP ledger in eight seconds. It gets converted by Bitso on the other end into peso at the spot rate, and then goes out on local rails to the ultimate bank account of the recipient. All of that t takes, because there's bank processes on either end that we can't fully control, it takes about 10 minutes, which used to be three days. And we've been told that the overall rate that they're seeing is 20 some odd basis points less than they would have seen otherwise, even taking into account FX fluctuations, et cetera. Damn, that is, think about how much banks can save by using this technology. It, it's going to get into the billions, if not trillions of dollars over the next couple decades, right? Because if you start saving 60, 70% on these transactions, that's gonna add up and banks, Banks are hurting right now. Let's be honest. The bond market's a mess, right? Banks are hurting and you're going to see more banks going out of business here as all of these business loans come up and the interest rates are still sky high. So I'd expect rates to start dropping maybe quarter one, quarter two of 2024. And that's really where you got to be careful in the market. Usually they don't start dropping until something starts breaking and things have started to break. Enabling the UK funds to use DLT complete. So this is a blueprint, UK fund tokenization, a blueprint for implementation. This is actually pretty cool here. Just a little context and background. The rationale for why fund tokenization is so important for the UK investment management industry, including examples of how progress has been made in other jurisdictions, a shared vision, the long-term aim for an investment fund a value chain based on DLT, right? This is what we want. We want the global regular financial system and all of these funds to come into blockchain and bring all of that value, right? Soon you're going to be able to invest your like your 401ks and your pensions and all this stuff in these ETFs. And that's really where a large share of this market is going to come in and fuel this next bull run, which is going to hopefully make us a little bit better off than we were this year in 2023. And so the technology working group recognizing this, the asset management task force, the economic security and the treasury in influential form convening senior leadership from the industry and the FCA instructed a new technology working group called the group dope name to identify how the UK investment management industry can harness the potential of innovative new technologies for the UK asset management industry. The group was tasked at articulating the benefits of increased innovation and technology for investors and industry and identifying the main opportunities presented by technology such as DLT and generative AI, areas where strategic technology shifts were creating new ambitions horizons for the industry. The group's membership was drawn from task force members, government and regulatory for wider non-asset management stakeholders. This is really cool, right? And you see it's phase one here fund tokenization enabling uk funds to leverage dlt which is the future 
further fun tokenization part two and part phase three artificial intelligence and other tech and so i'll be going through this in sensei chat this week i'll probably do one on friday i've been doing more chats in the cryptonators discord for members only but i will come back and talk with you on twitter all right so ripple now that they've mastered the payments industry they are heading into the custody industry right this is where things can get very exciting okay so let me play this clip by Nambin gupta and we'll talk about it that's what we do here we talk about joining it. me here we have naveen who is the managing director for the mina region middle east and north africa for ripple how are you very good thank you very much for having me it's a pleasure to be here the reason silicon valley happened because we had entrepreneurs we had investments and we had enabling regulations and that's the reason silicon valley which is the birthplace of the top five firms in the world. Yeah. Exactly the same momentum today we have in the UAE as well. You have enabling regulation with somebody like Vara, the CEO spoke in the morning. You have builders here in the room who are building companies. And then you have investment available with a um, number of sovereign funds and then many VC cap, many VC firms which are here. And this combination is powerful exactly to create a Silicon Valley for the crypto industry. So you said that Dubai could be the next Silicon Valley? Is that what I'm hearing? It is. hundred percent. At least for the crypto industry, for blockchain, Dubai currently is and will continue to be the Silicon Valley. East Middle East, in fact, as a region, is two or three times bigger than the largest remittance market in the world, that's the United States, right? In fact, I would personally think at some point, we would have global brands from the Middle East in remittance business itself, and it's not too far away. Okay, so that has been the biggest use case so far for Ripple clients, you would say, remittances, cross-border payments? So that's been the biggest uh, use case, but the other use case that's coming up is custody. Is custody, right? Ripple is at the forefront of all of this technology and they're going to be bringing the XRP holders along for the ride. Also, ISO will be everywhere. The implementation date is November of 2025 for everyone to be on ISO using ISO. Remember, ISO doesn't have anything to do with crypto, but with these new ISO messaging standard is a rich data messaging, and you can actually use crypto through the DTI, which is the digital token identifier ISO 24165. All right, let's keep it going. Everything will be tokenized, right? You look at this shipping logistics, right? This is why a lot of people like XDC. I've been in XDC for a couple of years and you have a hotel. This is, damn, it's so blurry logistics this is like supply chain this is port stuff ports and terminals it looks like you have off markets it's all coming it's all coming to blockchain and ibm is at the forefront of a lot of this technology and so we talked about this in the beginning right so this market this huge 700 trillion dollar market is why we are bullish on this partnership with the isda we don't know what this holds and yes al grand and there's some other partners in the isda but even if you got a little bit of a piece of this market we would be chilling we would be chilling right and we talk about dubai difc champions dubai as a global crypto hub with approval of xrp under virtual asset regime i did a video on this when this first came out but just in case you missed it why is this important how big is the di FC. And so the DIFC stands for the Dubai International Financial Center, and it has four over 4,000 registered companies in its free zone. And the reason why this is so big is because firms within the DIFC manage over $445 billion worth of assets. The DIFC is home to 17 of the top 20 banks in the world. The DIFC is home to 25 of the top 30 most systemically important banks in the world. The DIFC is home to five out of the top 10 insurance companies in the world. And the DIFC is home to five out of the top 10 asset management companies in the world. And they're going to want to use the cheapest, most friendliest DLT on the planet, right? And where, where a lot of the value is going to be, right? The token is a distraction, right? Is It's about what the utility of the token. So this is so important. And I think together, we're going to keep learning. We're going to keep growing and eventually we're going to get there and it will all be worth it at the end. But we have to go through these, these years of pain. We have to acknowledge what is being built, what we hold, right? And, and, and zoom out, right? We're still early. I know you hate hearing that, but it's true, right? Bank of England, CBDC, XRP. This is John Cutliffe, right? Let me go ahead and play this for you. To actually say, yes, let's implement a very major public On a scale of one to ten, how likely are we going to need to have a central bank this year? So I'd say, I'm not sure it's clear, I'll put a number on it. Oh, it's more likely, oh, oh, oh no, I just say it's more likely 
is more likely than not. We're talking six out of ten, are we? We're, we're talking more than five. More than five. <laughs> more than five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we, Do that. Sasha and Sarah agree the, with that the, number? I should say the back of one, seven. They're raising the number in the background. So maybe if I could just elaborate what's behind that. Your job is to be forward-looking in the back. It, it, it is to be forward-looking. Well. Well, looking over the horizon. No, I think I very yep. much agree with that. And the difficulty we have with this is that if we just wait until it's nine out of ten, we're five years away at mm. least. Okay, these are big projects. It may be that in the crypto world you can run up a, mm. a payment system very quickly, but this would be a very serious thing that would have to be resilient, more proof, secure. If we just wait until we say, okay, now we think it's needed, we will be five years behind. And that's one of the reasons we think it might be needed. Arguably, you've been very slow so far as well, haven't you? You've lost quite a lot of time getting to where we are now. We've tried to make where we're going commensurate with the trends that have been appearing. So some countries have moved faster, some have moved have moved more slowly. In terms of advanced economies, I don't think we're behind other advanced economies. Except the United States, right? So we're, we're behind everything. But if you can zoom out and see where we're going, guys, we have a bright future. It's just going to take us some time to get there. 130 jurisdictions, central banks around the world, are working on some type of form of central bank digital currency. They're coming and they're going to want to use a standard that they can all operate on. Not every single one is going to want to use the same technology, but a large portion are going to choose the technology that suits their country best. And since a lot of countries like the United States, you have the UK, you have Australia, you have New Zealand, a lot of these countries, Japan, they send money to and from, right? These are big institutions that send money to and from. They're going to want to be on the same system and use the same technology. And that's where the real value will come from. But we need to get there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this was a good update. I hope you had some fun. I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for being here. Crypto Sensei, I'll see you in the next one. Aloha.